All right, great, Peter. Thanks for joining me. Of course, we're here to talk about the seller performance panel we're going to be on in uh, for Prosper March 13th, 4 to 5 p.m. If you haven't bought a ticket yet yep. for Prosper, definitely do it if only to see our panel, right? Our, our seller performance expert panel, which is Peter and myself, former yep. Amazonians. Prosper. Yep, and, uh, and Ed Rosenberg and Cynthia Stein. So that's going to be uh, March 13th. And um, we have that asterisk next to our names because we're former Amazon. So it makes sense that we'd talk about escalations, right? Bezos escalations, something we Absolutely. both know a lot about. You used to do seller services. I, I worked for seller performance. Do you want to define for people what a Bezos escalation is for starters? Yeah, sure. So Bezos escalations are really when something occurs, uh, either a customer or a seller, uh, and they feel like their situation isn't resolved properly, and so they have to escalate it, uh, up, going upstream, if you will, to senior leadership. And of course, Jeff Bezos, being the CEO, uh, is the most senior position there uh, that someone could escalate to. And so they email Jeff uh, at Amazon and uh, escalate their situation to uh, him. Yeah. Do you think there are kind of common misconceptions or mistakes, you know, now the Jeff escalation or the Jeff at Amazon email address is everywhere. It's almost become a regular email queue and it wasn't like that when we were working there. Right. Uh, yeah. Do you think there are some, you know, mistakes people make kind of jumping the gun, writing to Jeff early or not understanding what, it, what even executive seller relations is before they send an email yes. to that address? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of misconceptions about what escalating to Jeff Bezos office will do. Uh, and there are a lot of sellers that absolutely jump the gun. Uh, they don't do the, the due diligence to understand what the situation is around their account. Um, and they basically come off as complaining. Yeah. And Amazon is, is, is so customer focused. Uh, in both the customer, the end customer who's buying the product, but also the seller that's the customer. Yeah. Um, and so they, you know, this is, this is a team that intercepts these emails and they have a lot of data around the seller's performance. And, um, if a seller doesn't take the time to slow down, understand what they've done, uh, or doing, uh, and then they just fire off this email willy nilly, uh, it's really, it can, it can backfire. It can actually hurt your account because, um, you know, they know what's going on. And so there are a lot of mistakes that sellers made by thinking that they can just fire off this email, complain, and everything's going to be okay. But that's really not the case. Right. Like it's a shortcut, a magical shortcut. But I think a lot of people misunderstand that you need a good plan of action to send in along with the escalation, right? It's really two things, you know, you don't just send a plan. You don't just yep. send a complaint. You need them both and they both have to be well yep. written and you have to understand who's reading it, right? Um, that's definitely Absolutely. something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're definitely planning to address that on the panel in a lot more depth. Um, just scratching the surface yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. The panel, I mean, hopefully we'll have time. Uh, I can go in and, and talk about personal experiences that I had, uh, with Jeff Bezos escalations when I was there. Uh, we'll hopefully be able to talk about, you know, strategies that are occurring now that uh, you may not want to try to escalate. You may want to try to address it with the team and okay. really understand the reasons why you would want to escalate. It's really a last resort also. And I yeah. think that a lot of sellers think that they can do it. Um, but you know, when you do it and it fails, what else do you do? So yeah. <laughs> you, you yeah. kind of, your hands are tied after that. So you really need to understand the, the, the situation and the steps that you've taken to get to that point. Yeah. Um, because you can't just escalate, escalate, escalate and hope that it's going to get done. I think, I mean, there are, there are people who just think that they can't escalate within seller performance. There are misconceptions about lower level escalations. They think, well, I'll take it straight to the top and they're going to save them. They're going to get reinstated faster. They're going to save yep. themselves some time. But like you said, they could be, you know, they, there could be other options that they're killing off and just putting all their chips on one space too early. And they're prematurely escalating, like I said, without even the plan of action Absolutely. to escalate with. You need something to escalate with. So it's just important yeah. to keep that in mind. All right. Well, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. that's absolutely good. I mean, we'll get into, I mean, I'll talk about the difference between solid performance and escalating and Jeff um, on March 13th as well. Uh, and, yep. um, in terms of the year that was 2017, uh, there were a lot of different things going, it was suspension causes, safety issues, right? 
notice claims oh, yeah. of infringement, those both spiked. Um, for anything about, around product reviews, review manipulation, uh, which is a good example I'll talk about in a second. But I mean, what do you think sellers can do in terms of staying ahead, getting ahead of the curve, uh, sure. trying to be prepared for these things so that it's not a lightning strike that suddenly takes out their entire business? Yeah, absolutely. The Amazon, one thing that you know about them is that change is constant. So they're constantly updating policies. They're constantly um, you know, changing the way that sellers interact with customers um, um, and protecting that customer experience. And so it is, it is rather difficult for sellers to get out in front of what's coming, you know, what's next, what's the next policy update. Um, one thing though that you can do is you can look at Amazon in terms of how they run their business and their Amazon leadership principles and everything that Amazon does is working from the customer backwards. And so if there are um, behaviors or tactics or strategies that sellers are uh, adopting and using on a regular basis that results in negative customer experiences or right. somehow you know fracture trust with customers Amazon's going to be addressing that whether it yeah. be um, you know the end customer with with review manipulation or whether it be the seller who's the customer who's getting hit with uh, you know fraudulent rights owner abuse complaints um, those sorts of tactics that sellers use yeah. to to damage customer trust, those are on the radar every single day, every minute of what Amazon's doing. And so sellers can be um, getting out in front of these policy changes for those sorts of things. You know, if, yeah. it's, if it's a bad customer experience, um, it's going to be top priority for them. So you can yeah. anticipate those sorts of things. The other thing is Amazon really believes in automating their systems, automating the way that they do things. They really don't want people involved. They really feel like they should be able to get in there and have a tool, uh, be able to do it machine learning. And so one thing is if there are systems that you're currently using and it involves a person, don't be surprised if Amazon comes out and says, this is now a self-service tool. You do it right. yourself. Uh, it's automated. Those are the other, other sorts of things. Uh, and always improving efficiencies right. so like with FBA shipments and things like that. So those yeah. are, those are all things that sellers should be uh, thinking. Yeah. About. I mean, yeah. the reviews, review manipulation is a good example because, I guess my words of advice for people are just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of what's going on, stay tuned in. I mean, be yeah. judicious about which group you belong to and, you know, forums and Facebook groups are nice as long as the advice is good. So, yeah, I absolutely. mean, some, some of these groups, they, they sort of just have a case of Amazon envy and they're, they're would be experts, but, um, yeah. but you can't just shut out the world. You have to be aware of trends um, yeah. and review manipulation, people were still sending non-compliant emails, you know, a few weeks ago that nine months ago were basically out in the world. It was known that you couldn't do that anymore. Right. And I, I, I'm still surprised when I see some of this stuff and I'm thinking, you know, why didn't they maybe keep tuned into what's going on and stop some of these practices earlier? Because, yeah. you know, you can't just wing it. You have to be aware of what's going on, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing that, that uh, a lot of sellers fall victim to is seeing Amazon do it and think that it's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally yesterday I had a client contact me about a product that they had removed uh, and the product they were selling is actually restricted in, in the UK, uh, not legal to sell in the UK. And, and they end up coming back and saying, well, I think Amazon's also selling it. Like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Just because Amazon's doing it doesn't mean it's okay. Uh, right. So it's, you know, follow the rules, understand the terms of service, understand their policies and adhere to them. I mean, those yeah. are the things that you can do to get out in front of any kind of policy yeah. changes that could impact your business. And also be forward thinking in terms of like, if you have a chance to be in touch with category management, right? If they invite you to participate in some sort of interaction or forum or, you know, they want to grow your business, grow your account, those category managers might have information on what's coming. Right. They might have ideas about I'm not saying to sit down and talk to my former teams every day, but they, they have their ear to the ground on some of this stuff usually. So they might yes. have some helpful tips for you. Right. If you spend the time to nurture that relationship, which I'm you know, doing for a lot of my clients, too. So absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then finally, uh, of course, you know, Amazon's always promising to beef up their anti counterfeit policies. I'm sure you and I both are working with private label brands. Um, yes. I mean, we're in what I do, I'm kind of working with resellers who are accused of selling counterfeit products who are sourcing from reliable uh, suppliers, but uh, at the same time, they're private label sellers trying to prevent someone from hopping on their listings and selling a generic mm -hmm. brand that was manufactured you know, cheaply. 
uh, under the branded product with all the great reviews that's already been established. So do you have any yeah. ideas or just quick words of wisdom in terms of, you know, the counterfeit issues not going away this year any more than it no. was last year. So we're going to address that on our panel, of course. What are some of the ideas you might give people that day? So first and foremost, you have to own your intellectual property. You have to have a trademark for your brand. So, you know, if you don't have the trademark for your brand, either the word mark or the image mark, you absolutely need to go get it. Um, it's not difficult. Get a lawyer, cost you around 900 bucks, 1000 mm. bucks. Um, but the truth is, is that unless you have that intellectual property, unless you have the, the type, the word mark or the image mark uh, trademark, you really aren't going to have a brand on Amazon. Um, because of the tool that Amazon rolled out about a year ago, the brand registry and protection right. tool, uh, it's, it, it all hinges on having that uh, U.S. patent trade office uh, trademark. And so mm -hmm. while it's not perfect, uh, it is effective um, and it can help. Um, and so you need to understand what that is and what you have and don't have if you don't have the trademark. Um, and then you need to proactively monitor your business on Amazon but also try to proactively monitor your business outside of Amazon. What other marketplaces are you being, is your product being sold on? And, and look at overseas marketplaces, not just the U S look at the marketplaces in China um, and Europe and really have a good yeah. understanding of how your product is positioned out there. Um, because if it is uh, actually pirated material um, and there's a lot of it out there, then there's a really good chance that it'll show up on Amazon. Yeah. And of course, control your supply chain, right? Be aware of selling, like you said, that's a good point you made about other sales channels off Amazon even because people are going to want to sell a successful product on Amazon. If you're selling huge batches of this stuff and you're not keeping track of who you're selling it to, what your distribution chain is, um, yes. obviously you might easily become confused between what's possibly counterfeit and what isn't. And then you're doing right. a bunch of test buys to figure it out and figure out who you sold to. Um, so right keep track of where the product's going and in what quantities, right? And then like you said, have a competent legal team that understands the trademark process and intellectual property. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't have to be real complicated with regards to intellectual property. It can yeah. get there though. And it can get, yeah. and it can happen very quickly. Um, and, and you know, there's a lot of sellers that are going out trying to capture IP for brands that they've been selling for a while and they can, and what are yeah. they going to do? And I think that that's going to be a problem this year because Amazon announced that they're going to deprecate the old brand registry tool yeah. and that you've got to go through the new one. I heard so that. And the yeah. new one, you have to have the IP, you have to have a mm -hmm. trademark for it. So the truth is if you don't have IP, you don't have your intellectual property, trademark, image mark, word mark you're not going to have a brand on Amazon. Yeah. Um, and so you really got to get out in front of that. We, we help a lot of our clients with that. Yeah. And obviously you need competent legal advice. It's not a do it yourself. Try this at home because a lot of people yeah. have fumbled that made mistakes and then they pay the price later on. So anyway, we'll be talking about all of these wonderful things and more right. at the self yep. performance panel again, uh, Las Vegas. 13th, 14th, uh, yep. I'm leaving on the 15th, but I'll be there on the 13th for 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., the, the panel with you. And yep. obviously, since we have that asterisk next to our names, people expect a lot of great things from us. So we'll be prepared, right? <laughs> well, it's always fun to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be a good time. This is a great show. It's a great show to network with former Amazonians. It's a great show to network with other sellers and also yeah. service providers. It's really strong. It's one of the better shows out there. I highly recommend it. This will be yep. my third year attending though. Yeah. Me as well. This will be my second time. And I would say anyone who has questions about Peter or me or the Seller Performance Panel, direct them to James Thompson or James can uh, direct you to us as needed. And we hope to see you in Vegas Absolutely. next month. Thanks, Peter. Sounds great. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Chris.